Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the video. Today we're checking out the Team Corelli Synchro 4. Now, if you watched yesterday's video, you'll know that I've already gotten out with the buggy and given it its first run. That was thanks to the fact that the day that I got the buggy was absolutely beautiful. Sunshine, blue sky, 20 degrees Celsius. But every day after was rain. So I decided to take advantage, guys, of that beautiful day and just get this buggy out of the box and get it out for its first run. Now that makes this video, guys, that much better. So instead of just the usual unboxing where we get the car out, we get it on the bench, we go over the specs, give you my first impressions and all that kind of stuff, we actually get to do that but also guys blend it with the fact that I've already ran the buggy and I can put those specs towards actual real world driving of the buggy. So I'm excited to do this guys. So let's just get that buggy in the center of the bench and start discussing everything. All right, guys, before we get into covering the Synchro 4, the specs and everything that I wanted to talk about, I wanted just to quickly go over where this buggy lies in the Team Corelli buggy lineup. To the right, we have my favorite RC ever, the Asuga XLR. Not just my favorite buggy guys, but my favorite RC ever. It is just a wicked size, it handles amazing, and it's just very, very fun to drive, very enjoyable. It jumps amazing. It, it's, I can't guys say enough good things about it. I've never done a review on it. I'm actually guys not a big review person, just because I feel there's so many, you know, different opinions and we all kind of look for different things in RCs that to really, when you do a review, it's kind of hard because it's just based on what you think. But again, guys, because this is my video, yes, the Sugal XLR, guys, is my favorite RC ever. It is, again, guys, like I mentioned, just a really fun RC to drive. Over here, we've got the Spark XB6. This is your normal size 1.8 scale buggy where the XLR is, where the Asuka guys is an XL 1.8 scale buggy. The Spark is just your standard 1.8 scale buggy, but an absolute animal. Ridiculously fast, very durable, just a very beefy buggy. Hands down guys, probably the best standard 1.8 scale size buggy you can get, especially when it comes to bashing. I can't really speak about racing and all that kind of stuff and the competitive kits or anything like that, but just based in the realm of bashing buggies, you can't beat the Spark XB6. But right in the middle of the table, lower end of the Team Corelli buggies is the new Team Corelli Synchro 4. Now the 4 guy stands for 4S. So you've got 4S electronics in this, which obviously guys, for somebody who's looking for crazy, crazy power, yeah, you're gonna be going with the XB6. But Team Corelli has kind of marketed this and built this for people that are either new to the buggy world, new to RC, or just maybe they are more of, let's say they're into crawling. Maybe they are all about crawling and rock crawling and all that kind of fun stuff. And they wanna get something just to go out and kind of have fun with. They wanna get out and do some bashing and all that kind of fun stuff, but they don't wanna pay huge money. They also don't want something that they're gonna to need to modify and change up because maybe it's got issues with gears or it's got issues with diffs. Maybe it's got ugly wheels and tires and ugly body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's where this buggy comes comes in. Because let's face it, guys, as you're looking at it right now, it is one good looking buggy. This blue outside super pops. So this is gonna be something that somebody's gonna be able to pick up, drop a 4S battery in and go out and have a really good time with. All right, guys, before we get right into the buggy, there's a few things I wanna cover. One is I've got a lot to say about this buggy. So you are gonna find at times that I'm all over the place with this video. Meaning I could be touching on the ESC and then all of a sudden get into run times or something like that and be all over the place. But there's just so much going on and I don't wanna miss any of it. So if you happen to notice that that's how the video is, hey, there's nothing I can do about it. That's just how I get. What I am gonna do first is talk about the overall specs of the buggy, the simple things like, for example, over here, guys, you have the Torox 135. Now that is a rebranded Max Tan, good for three and four S. It's a great little ESC. You'll find it in a lot of 4S vehicles. It comes with an XT90 soldered on your cap pack so that you are good to go there. Over here, you have the Team Corelli motor. This is the Curon 725. It is good for three and 4S and it is a 2150 kV motor. Now, sometimes I think I would have rather have seen something like a higher kV motor, maybe something guys in the realm of let's say 2400 kV. However, after running the buggy, this motor is very responsive. It was paired, guys, with the 13-tooth pinion, how the buggy comes out of the box. 
is very responsive, very torquey, and very quick. When the buggy's in the air, even though this is just a little, guys, it's a 4S buggy, it was very responsive. I had no problem correcting, bringing the front end up, or if I had to bring it down. Even though for the most part, guys, this buggy actually flies better than almost everything else I own, it still allows me to correct. And I've got, guys, 6S trucks that I can't maneuver the same way as this thing. So in one way, guys, like I mentioned, I'd love to see a higher revving motor for a little bit more speed, but the 2150, guys, does a very good job of controlling this buggy. And like I mentioned, it does come with a 13-tooth pinion, but the motor mount allows you to go upwards to a 15 and a 17-tooth pinion. Now, it's kind of a fixed mount in the sense that you can run a 13, a 15, or a 17-tooth. And the reason they did that is they know that this is a beginner's buggy. They know that the person that might be changing the pinion is new to changing a pinion, meshing a motor, all that kind of fun stuff. So they don't want somebody to make it too tight or make it too loose. What's nice is that it still uses just your basic motor mount where you're bolting in from this way. You don't have some stupid pin system where your motor's gonna kind of sit this way or sit this way, none of that junk. It still uses a standard setup it's just got those fixed holes again for your 13, your 15, and your 17 tooth pinion. Now I will be going up to a 15 tooth pinion in the next run. The 13 did a really, really good job. Temps were great. And the runtime guys with this guy right here. So this is a Gen Zace 5500 milliamp 4S 60C pack. Run times with this battery guys, I got 28 minutes. And at 28 minutes, I did not hit LVC, my GoPro died. So at that point, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to kind of pack it in, head home, and actually start looking at the buggy. I don't know how long. I probably guys would have got maybe even over the 30-minute mark. So this is where, when I said that I'm going to kind of get off track at times, this system, guys, is very efficient. We often forget, for us that have been in the hobby now for a while, we've got batteries, we've got chargers, we've got all that kind of stuff. We often forget what it's like to kind of get into the hobby new and a person driving let's say if you're a crawler type guy if you're a trail guy you may not have any big 4s batteries like this so if you're looking at picking up something that because you want to go out and bash with your buddies you want to start jumping and all that kind of stuff you can go out pick up one 5500 milliamp 4s pack and get upwards of a half an hour runtime that is wicked now i will leave guys a link in the description to Gen Z's website where you can pick up one of these 4s 5500 milliamp packs I have not yet, guys, talked about the steering servo. So it is a Team Corelli steering servo. It is a 7225. It is good for 25 kilograms of torque. You will need to change the setting, though, on your ESC. The BEC is set to 6 volts out of the box, and you will need to up that to 7.4 volts to get the full 25 kilograms of torque out of the servo. I'm referring to, guys, those little program cards. They come with all Hobbywing ESCs, or at least they used to. They're like 9 or 10 bucks. Dirt cheap. Plug it in, change the setting, and you're off and running has a composite link right here guys it's a fixed link as well as you also have your servo saver you got your threaded collar at the bottom i am a huge fan guys of these kind of links i know that we've been kind of brought up thinking that swapping over cheap plastic links to a nice turnbuckle to a nice adjustable turnbuckle is the way to go that was true back when we were kind of used to really cheap plastic links these composite links that are on the Team Corelli cars are super beefy. They set their cars up so well out of the box that they track straight. You don't need to change them. You don't want to go to something like the adjustable turnbuckles. And when I found guys that I have, I actually have issues. I end up breaking the rod ends and stuff like that. So I'm a huge fan, guys, of these links. I'm glad Team Corelli now pretty much puts them on all their cars because it is the way to go. All right, guys, now that we got all that out of the way, we can get to the meat and potatoes of the buggy. And that is mainly, guys, underneath. Unlike every other 3S, kind of 4S car, this does not have a plastic chassis. This is a 6061 3 millimeter thick aluminum chassis. And I am so friggin' happy that this is what Corelli went with. I am a huge fan of aluminum chassis. And even though a lot of the internet will tell you that plastic is the way to go, in my experience, guys, I have always had better luck with an aluminum chassis. Main reason is here and here. 
companies can never do the connection. So whether it's the plastic tub and then the bulkheads and the diff case, they, they can never do that right. This always ends up being a weak point for any of the plastic RCs that I have. This mark, guys, right here, if you missed the first video, I plowed into a curb. Now, it had like a bit of a bevel, so it's like, you know, had like a little bit of an angle to it. But the buggy did do a front flip off it. It didn't do a back flip, which means it was going in and it did this. It did a front flip. And guys, I've gone over the buggy. I was looking at the drive shafts, all that kind of stuff. I was kind of spinning everything. They're still running true. There's no issues there, which means this thing handled going into a curb. And like I said, guys, I did a front flip. I didn't do a back flip which meant it did kind of stop. <laughs> so I was very guys impressed with that. I was kind of worried about it, but again, guys, 6061, three millimeters thick, Team Corelli aluminum is awesome. It's probably guys the best in the business. My Corelli Shogun, which was a three millimeter thick 6061 chassis, never bent. Yet I have bent other companies 7075. Very, very happy about that. All right, guys, unlike the Radix 4, which was kind of an exact clone of the Radix 6, but with 4S electronics, the Synchro 4 is quite a bit different. They use a lot more composite plastic throughout. Your shock bodies now, guys, are a composite plastic, but you do have the aluminum caps. You have composite plastic shock towers and braces throughout. You can get the aluminum brace, guys, the tower-to-tower -tower brace that goes from here over to here. This little cap comes up and it's one solid piece. It's not two pieces or anything like that. It's not a very expensive part, so I may pick it up. However, guys, after the run that I did with it, I had no issues. And after, guys, hitting the curb, I had no issues. So I'm pretty sure, guys, the, the brace isn't needed. Again, I may pick it up just to kind of clean things up and just to kind of finish off the top of the buggy. But again, you've got, like I mentioned, guys, the composite shock bodies, the composite shock towers, the braces, the links like I've discussed as well. You have an aluminum motor mount. It's just encased in this composite plastic. The receiver box guys here is a little bit smaller than the ones in the 6S, but I still had no problem putting my RC7 something, something, something radio link receiver in here and to fit everything in. And it, it actually guys went together fine. There was no issues at all. The... Do, 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 do. The battery tray, guys, is, as far as I can see, a typical Corelli battery tray. You are going to want to, at some point, either run a third strap this way, or even something, guys, as simple as throwing a piece of Velcro in the bottom. Does help save this piece right here. On really big landings and stuff like that, the battery will shift. Now, saying that, I'm going to keep, guys, going back to hitting the curb, where after hitting the curb, the battery did not go through here. And again, I only have the two straps on it now, but I do have that piece of Velcro. So I think that definitely helps guys keeping the battery from shifting back and forth. You have your typical side guards. These are skinnier than let's say what comes on the Spark. The Spark is a little bit kind of more fatter here, a little bit more girthier, where the Synchro kind of keeps things a little bit tighter. No issues guys with that at all. I do like the girthiness of the Spark. I like that kind of more like fat kind of, aggressive little pit bull coming at you kind of look, but this still keeps things very, very clean, keeps the, everything in. You've got nice guards here. You also have these little pieces right here, which your body actually slides into. So it kind of helps keep the body from kind of flapping out, keeps dirt and debris out. Now, a few more details, guys, in the buggy, you have fluid differentials throughout. So front, center, and rear is all sealed. I was fine guys with the oils that were in it. I may pull the diffs at some point just to make sure they're topped up and all that kind of stuff. But the setup out of the box guys works really, really well. You have CVDs in the front, dog bones in the rear. And what I'm really happy about guys is this wing. Anybody that owns a Corelli car, you know where I'm going with this. As amazing as team Corelli buggies and truggies are, they did lack in one department and that was the wing. You break your stock wing guys within the first one or two runs. This wing guys, on the other hand, is super flexible. I actually even think they call it that. They even made a note about that in some of their, their press videos and stuff like that, that they've changed the wing and it works really, really well. I'm gonna be picking up these wings for my Spark and my Kagama. I'll probably have to drill out the holes here, something a little bit different, obviously guys, to fit those mounts. But again, very, very happy guys with this wing. And I really hope that they release 
this wing but in an XL version for the Asuga because I've gone through a few wings on that buggy as well. I've actually got two hanging on the wall over there for spares. So huge improvement here. This was one thing that they definitely need to improve on and it looks like they did. Now guys, I do have a few minor complaints about the buggy. It is missing sway bars. And I understand that with this being a budget friendly buggy, they wanna cut costs where they can. I'm, I understand that completely. However, I do think that sway bars would have just finished it off and given the buggy that much better handling. However, as I say that, when I was driving the buggy, I didn't actually have any issues with handling at all. I actually felt like it drove really, really nice. I could send it. It didn't seem to topple that much either. So oddly enough, the buggy is very well out of the box. Maybe even had, if it had been included as kind of just a part in the box, if you wanted to add them, whatever. Either way, would have been nice to see them. However, I don't really know if they were needed. So that was me kind of just rambling on there. However, the one issue I do have guys is when it comes to the body. Unfortunately, guys, I did break it back here. It's very, very thin between the material and where the body post goes into. I would have liked to have seen something they have in the Asuga where it's that plastic piece. Again, I understand that that would have, you know, brought up the cost a little bit. They would have had to have manufactured the part, designed the part and all that kind of stuff. But I think it would have been something nice to do. I am going to not replace the body. I will just use some Gorilla Tape, kind of reinforce this, even probably fold it over. And hopefully, guys, that'll do the job. I think it will personally, guys, because while I was running it, I don't know at what point that I broke that and the body never came off. I never actually had any issues with the body. So it wasn't until I got home that I was pulling the body pin that I realized that I had broke that. Now, one thing guys I do need to add about the body is that it looks great. I obviously guys went with the blue. You can get blue, red, green, or orange. I went with the blue. It matches my Spark and my Asuga. This blue guys right here is so vibrant. Once you get it outside, it really comes to life. It's very shiny and it looks awesome under the sun. It's weird inside right now, guys, in the hobby room. I've got a minor studio lighting, if you want to call it that. It just doesn't do this body justice. All right, guys, at the beginning of the video, I had mentioned that the Synchro 4 was going to be kind of the new class of budget friendly buggies the beginner buggy, the easy to get into buggy. And let's face it, at the price point, there is nothing better on the market. When you look at other cars that are in this price range, they don't even come close. Between the aluminum chassis, the quality of materials, the composite plastic, the wheels and tires, the body, the electronics that are used, nothing even comes close. And after driving it, guys, I can definitely reassure that. This thing is top notch. And besides from the 4S system, there's nothing about this buggy that even screams beginner because there's many, many companies in higher end vehicles that still use plastic composite shock towers and stuff like that. So when you get this thing out of the box and you remove the body, I guarantee you, your first thought is not budget buggy. It's, hey, this is a really premium looking buggy. They did a terrific job of it. And it's all parts of the buggy guys from the quality of the electronics, the composite plastics, the three millimeter 6061 aluminum chassis, the wheels and tires, everything about this buggy guys is spot on. But there's a second part to why I said it is gonna be the new class of entry level buggies and entry level RC. And there's a reason why the Spark is in the picture right now. Oddly enough, before I drove this thing, I was thinking of things like the shocks, the fact that they're composite bodies versus aluminum bodies. And I thought to myself, okay, so you know what? That's a cool thing because these shocks guys are listed as an option part for this buggy. buggy. They will bolt right on. Now, after driving it, I don't care as much about the fact that I can bolt these on because these shocks guys did so well and they held up to everything that I put the buggy through. However, if you happen to break it, if you happen to just have that landing where maybe you possibly break or crack the body, these shocks guys will directly fit, which means you can take something that is an entry level buggy and start really dressing it up. Even guys, the aluminum diff cases that are the upgrade parts for the Spark, the Asuga, the Kagama, they will fit on here as well. All the spring steel parts guys, so all your out drives and stuff like that, if you happen to break one, crack one, you can go to the spring steel. 
That, guys, is huge. And why I say it that way, and why I'm putting so much emphasis in my voice when I say it, is that some lineup of cars, and I'm not going to name the brand because I, en I enjoy that brand and I like it, and it's not going to be very hard for you guys to figure out who they are, but they have a huge 3S, 4S lineup. But they all have slightly different parts, slightly different shocks, slightly different length to the shocks, you name it. And I've seen online where, and I know I went through this guys with a couple of those cars where you were like, okay, I want to upgrade the shocks because they're all plastic, plastic caps, you name it. And you're thinking, okay, I want to upgrade those shocks and I'm going to go on hot racing website or whatever. You have no idea what to order. It gets so confusing. You're, and I've seen it where people have posted where they bought a shock and it was too long or it was too short. With the Synchro, you can go on Corelli's website buy the aluminum shocks. They're already pre-built. I think you probably just have to add oil to them and directly, guys, bolt them onto your buggy. Now, if your first thought is, well, geez, yeah, that's great for Corelli. They're going to sell parts. Yeah, it is. But nobody does a shock better than the OEM manufacturer of whatever RC it is. Whether it's Traxxas, Arma, Habau, Team Corelli, Losi, axial, you name it, their shocks are always better. I remember swapping over my one of my X-Maxes to the big Proline Reservoir piggyback shocks. They cost me a fortune. Those shocks were absolute junk. You could not get rebound out of them. They were just crap and they were so expensive that I didn't want to take them off because they cost me an arm and a leg, but they were garbage. The companies always do their shocks the best. And the fact that you can simply grab a pair of these shocks, whether guys you're buying them off Team Corelli's website, buying them off a hobby shop's website, or even an eBay chop shop, they're going to be able to bolt on, which to me, guys, is such a game changer that you're not going, okay, what am I buying? What, what do I need to buy? You're going online, you're searching, you're asking questions, what shock fits, what doesn't. That's not going to be the case. And that goes for, guys, a lot of the parts on this. And you can go on their website. You can look up everything that's available. I'm not going to go over them all. To me, the shocks were kind of the first thing that really stood out. The diff cases and stuff like that were big things, guys, that stood out. But I think that is a huge positive thing for Corelli to do. And like I mentioned, I know some people are going to be thinking, well, yeah, that just brings us back to Team Corelli and supporting them and having to buy their parts. But... Like I mentioned, guys, nobody does shocks better than the OEM. Nobody does shocks better than the company that's releasing the car. It doesn't matter the brand or not, they do it the best. And the fact that Team Corelli, guys, does have a fabulous shock out of the box, hey, that, guys, is a win-win. Now, after saying all that, and it's funny, guys, because that was going to be a huge point to this video, was talking about the parts compatibility between the 4S and the 6S cars that... It, it, again, guys, it was going to be a huge point of the video, but now that I've driven the Synchro and I jumped it and I launched it and I put it into a tree and all that kind of fun stuff, and the fact that the buggy took it all, it kind of makes this less relevant. However, I do want to make you guys know that, yeah, you're going to be able to grab a lot of the 6S parts and drop it down onto the Synchro 4, and you don't have to worry, guys, again, like about having, make sure they fit or needing another part or something like that. Again, guys, huge plus. All right, guys, there you have it, the Team Corelli Synchro 4. Stay tuned, guys. The next video of this will be running the 15-tooth pinion. And that'll probably be, guys, the only change I'm doing. We'll, we'll run it. We'll see how the temps are. See if we think that we can jump it up to 17-tooth. I'm not one to overgear something just to do it, just to get those few more miles an hour, but then end up with heat issues. I will drop the 15-tooth pinion in, see how it be behaves. I may vent this area, guys, just a little bit, just to allow a little bit of air in to help kind of cool the motor. But if the 15-tooth does generate, guys, too much heat, I will go back to the 13-tooth. I do want to give a huge thanks to CowRC. A while ago, guys, they had sent me out a bunch of products, a bunch of cleaning products, lubrication oils, all that kind of fun stuff. And it was funny. When I got back from running this buggy, it was pretty disgusting. The bottom of the chassis was all grass stained and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, man. And then I was like, wait a minute. I still haven't used my chassis cleaner yet. So I came downstairs, grabbed one of my bottles. I mixed up a solution. I'm pretty sure I overdid it. I'm not sure what the ratio is supposed to be. I think I went five to one, and I think that was a bit too much. But either way, sprayed it down, guys. Used my brush, cleaned all the bottom of the chassis, 
wipe down the body and I got this thing guys basically looking brand new again which is awesome and I should also guys give a shout out to you guys know him Kevin at KCRC because his ramp has been a game changer guys for me game changer for the channel it allows me to go wherever I want throw the ramp down and send this, whatever I'm driving to the moon and back it is awesome guys and a lot of people I know have picked up his ramps lately so huge thanks there but guys that's it I am blown away by this little buggy for $370 US you are not going to buy a better RC it just doesn't exist you will either sacrifice in handling you will sacrifice in power you will sacrifice in durability everything this is not the case though with the Synchro 4 they've just done it right and I'm very happy guys that I got one of these sent out and looking forward to doing the modifications guys getting that 15 tooth pinion in and all that kind of fun stuff so as always guys that's it that's all if you enjoyed this video give me a big thumbs up please subscribe and have a great day